And now I would like to introduce our main speaker. Dr. Maria Simonov is a woman who very much resembles the original Madame Curie in her singular achievements. She received her MD in Poland from Poznań Medical Academy and then earned a PhD in microsurgery. Most recently, she received an honorary academic appointment at the Medical University in Poznań. In 1995, she became Director of Plastic Surgery Research and Head of Microsurgery Training at the Cleveland Clinic. In 2005, she joined the faculty in the Department of Surgery at the Cleveland Clinic Lerner College of Medicine of Case Western Reserve University. I'm reminded that Madame Curie was the first woman on the faculty of the University of Paris, so she resembles her in that way too. And in December of 2008, we all discovered this remarkable woman. She received world acclaim as the leader of the surgical team that performed the world's first near total facial allo transplant. I am deeply honored to present Dr. Maria Simonov. Good afternoon. It's a great honor, but no comparison, and I will tell you why in a moment. Madame Curie is unbeatable, and uh, through her career and through the all achievements which I will present in the moment, uh, this is almost impossible to duplicate Madame Curie in the future. Uh, I think there are many women in the audience uh, who are scientists and those who are interested in research, in culture, in uh, music and arts, and uh, Madame Curie is a great inspiration to all of us. She is not only inspiration to all Polish women, I'm sure she is given as an example to all French women, and also American women and all over the world. The fact that uh, we always in the United States have the tendency to compare achievements with sport records and championships, I must tell you that going very carefully through the Madame Curie biography, I discovered that she is the unbeatable champion in many aspects. For the 75 years after the death of Madame Curie, nobody, no man or woman, have beaten her in her the first or the only achievement. She was the first woman to achieve the Nobel Prize in 1903 for her discovery of uh, polonium and work on radium. Madame Curie was the first, probably, and the only woman who between 1898 of discovery of polonium and 1904, when she just passed for receiving her Nobel Prize, gave a birth to healthy two daughters, Irene and Eva, who were contributing to a lot of science and work done thereafter. In 1906, Madame Curie became the first woman, as Judge Kulpinski mentioned already, to be a professor in Sorbonne. There were no women professors before. That was not enough. Madame Curie was working hard on a daily basis with her husband Pierre and was contributing uh, with the work together uh, to the development of uh, further development of uh, radium and uh, different uh, applications of radium. When her husband uh, was killed in an accident in 1906, she was really depressed, but then devoted all her work towards development of their common work, which started the first Nobel Prize, which they shared, to achieve her own second Nobel Prize in 1911. This is another first and only for Madame Curie. She was the only and is still the only woman and only out of two people in the world who achieved Nobel Prize in two different science fields. The first, the chemistry, and the second, the physics. And the only other person is uh, Linus uh, Fleming who received it in chemistry and in uh, peace 
so there are no other people like her. Madame Curie also was very influential and uh, she was uh, trying to set the institutes uh, in uh, France and what was depressing and what was something which she was fighting was the fact that after 1911, second Nobel Prize, she was trying to become a first woman member of French Academy of Science and she was rejected. She was rejected, uh, she was depressed, uh, she actually was hospitalized for depression and kidney problems. However, she gave it back because her student, Margaret Pierce, became a first Academy of Science of France member, first woman member, 50 years after. That's unbelievable. This is just uh, talking about courage and uh, um, future and vision which Madame Curie was having at that time. She also has set the Institute of Madame Curie or Curie Institute in France in 1911 and this was with the help of uh, French government and this institute became a cradle of other Nobel Prize winners. From Marie Curie Institute, four more Nobel Prize winners were just awarded the Nobel Prize Award, including her daughter, Irene uh, Jolie Curie, and her son-in-law, law, um, Frederick uh, Jolie Curie. So again, unbelievable achievement. Also, Madame Curie was uh, contributing to uh, support uh, of Poland, and it was at that time difficult uh, to get uh, grants uh, to create institute which was her dream, a Curie Institute in, in Warsaw and Poland. So this led her to visit in the United States, the first one in 1921, when she visited in Pennsylvania and got a lot of uh, awards and, and was uh, honored and uh, received the support for some of her research. And the second visit was specifically uh, set for her to get the funds to create the institute in Warsaw. It was in 1929 when she came to the United States and most of the funding which she received, she have devoted to open the Madame Curie or Curie Institute in Warsaw. Madame Curie uh, visited Warsaw for the last time in 1934, just before her death. However, her dedication, her love of science, uh, her contributions, uh, as I probably have proven already, are incomparable and unbeatable. Madame Curie is an icon in science. Uh, she is an unbelievable human being. She has stimulated and impressed so many people all over the world. And I think we all are very proud that uh, she shares our heritage, that we can say that going far away from your own country, as she did at age of 24, and spending time and devoting it to what we love, we can achieve a lot, and she did. And for her, it was almost like a normal achievement of the highest standards and awards because of her perseverance and her hard work. I think we are all proud of Marie Curie, and that's what I have to say. Thank you very much, Dr. Maria Simeonov.